All right, Daryl Lost Live coming to you from Southern California here. Happy Monday. It's November 5th, 2018. All right, what would you say about the U.S. military occupying U.S. cities, right, on the border of U.S. and Mexico? Uh-huh. All right, yeah, the United States military, the military, not, not, the, res not the reserves, the U.S. military full-time. What would you say about the U.S. military occupying U.S. cities on a long-term basis? Right? Uh, where? What about the uh, U.S.-Mexican border? What about San Diego? Mm-hmm. What about the cities uh, 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 in, in, uh, in uh, Texas? What about border cities? What about a long-term U.S. military occupation in the U.S.? Yeah, I'm looking at some articles right here. More than 4,800 troops are near the border, U.S. says. It's from the Wall Street Journal. I'm going to read from that from a moment. Here in a moment. Uh, size of deployment has increased several times in the past 10 days. Here's another one. Uh, it's a San Diego Union Tribune.com. Six San Diego area military bases will be used to assist at border for Operation Faithful Patriot. Now, don't forget... Uh, the war in Afghanistan, right? Uh, if you look up how long was the war or how long is the war, <laughs> it's really still going on in Afghanistan. U.S. war in Afghanistan. 2001 till now, still going on. 17 years. All right, so that's the Afghani war, which is still going on. Uh, here's the uh, war in Iraq. Still going on, basically. The Iraq war was a protected, protracted armed conflict that began in 03. That's 15 years old, right, with the invasion of Iraq by a United States-led coalition that overthrew the government of Saddam Hussein. All right, so it's, they're still meddling around in there. Okay, so that's 15 years there. Now we got uh, 17 years, the Afghani war still going on, not to mention a whole bunch of other wars that most people don't even think about that are going around the world. What about if the U.S. now occupies, the U.S. military now occupies U.S. cities? Now, I'm saying this because uh, last night I had a vision, uh, dream slash vision, yeah, and I was actually, I don't know, I didn't have the city, the city didn't say, hi, this is San Diego, but it looked like San Diego. In, in the vision, I was taken down to a U.S. city by the U.S. border with Mexico, U.S.-Mexican border, <clears throat> and this city was filled with U.S. military personnel. There was barbed wire, there was jeeps in the streets, there were, uh, I'm, we're not talking about the border, we're not talking about at the border crossing, I'm talking about U.S. cities being occupied by U.S. Mil US, US military. I think that's what's coming. I really, really do. Is that bad? Uh, you have to do what you have to do. But I was kind of shocked because in the vision as I was going through this, and to me, I, it looked like, and I thought of San Diego, because I'm only uh, probably an hour-ish from San Diego, right, in Irvine, California. If you go south to the Mexican border from here, you'll hit San Diego, which is about an hour, hour and a half, if, you know, depending on traffic. And I thought, man, and, and I was walking through the streets, and there was U.S. military in the cities, U.S. cities, patrolling and cordoning off uh, parts of the city. Oh yeah, you couldn't go everywhere. There was control. There was barbed wire. There was uh, patrolling. You know, U.S. Um, U.S. military patrolling the streets in the cities. Like San Diego. Oh yeah. Is that what's going to happen? It looks like it. It's been happening in other countries of, of the world for 15, 17 years. Now listen, I, I believe... Uh, Donald Trump, President Trump, is a great president. I think he's one of the greatest presidents the U.S. has ever had. Uh, especially in the last 150 years. <clears throat> you got to go back to Abraham Lincoln, Abraham Lincoln to have a half-decent president. So I think uh, after Abraham Lincoln, uh, you know, especially the act of 1871, most of the 99.99% of the U.S. presidents have been basically doing everything the Vatican, the New World Order, wants them to do. And those that didn't got killed. JFK, go bye-bye. Ronald Reagan, well, they try to kill him. And the U.S. presidents that get in, they know. 
They say that U.S. presidents aren't elected, they're selected. Well, that's probably true in the last 150 years, until Trump. And Trump was elected by the people because had not the people come out, came out in droves, or, or, or if the 2016 election, uh, people didn't come out and vote for Trump in the 2016 election, it would have been another selection, not an election. People vote, of course, but the, uh, the number of people that are illegal, double voting, dead people voting, usually sways the election to the New World Order's choice. All right, so they want a Bush to get in, so they just, you know use all these phony fake names, this, that, and the other, double voting, to push their candidate for the victory. So there's really a selection. People vote, but it's rigged. So there's a real election, but it's rigged. The only thing that, uh, that they were taken you know, off guard with was the 2016 election because they thought, well, we're going to rig it again. Millions of votes were cast illegally uh, for uh, Hillary Clinton, maybe two to five million or more. But Trump still won. Because people came out and voted. They thought, the deep state thought, the new world order thought that's all they needed to really secure the election for Hillary Clinton. But they were wrong. And I think the voter turnout should be even greater for tomorrow's election, Tuesday midterm election, and 2020. And if that's the case, there's not much the new world order could do. So let me get back to the subject. So I say that because it's not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, having the U.S. military at the borders. And I'm going to read these articles right now. Uh, it's not necessarily a bad thing. It's a needed thing. But I think that we, we need to get a bigger picture of what's about to happen or what is happening. Why? So you're, so you're not uh, unprepared, so you can pray, uh, so you can plan ahead. <laughs> yeah, if you happen to be traveling to, you know, cities along the U.S. border. Uh, yeah, and I think, I personally think there's a high probability of a long-term U.S. military occupation in U.S. border cities. U.S. border cities. Yeah. Things that you would see in Iraq. I Iraq, Iraq, whatever. Things that you see in Afghanistan. Things that you see in other countries. Things you see in Syria coming to U.S. cities right now and larger than what I think people uh, would imagine. You know, it's one thing on the border, but what about U.S. military in U.S. cities patrolling the streets on a daily, weekly, monthly, yearly base basis? Can it happen? Sure it could. I think it's happening right now. It's just the time we're living in. There are verses here I was looking at earlier. Matthew 24, verse 7. It says, uh, this one verse, For nation, Mexico, shall rise against a na nation. The U.S., Honduras, Mexico, Central American countries rising, coming to the border. Nation shall rise against nation. That's what's happening. What do you do? I've done videos, uh, my last three videos on YouTube. I think it's three videos. Let me see. Yeah, U.S. military can shoot at the caravan, Trump says. I did that one on YouTube, my last video. The one before that, Mexico immigrant or migrant caravan, 14,000. Just the tip of an iceberg of possibly millions. Take a look at that one. Go to my website, DarylLawson.com or DarylLawsonLive.com. Click on these videos. Thousands of people have watched these videos already. I just did them a few days ago. Uh, here's one. Trump to set up immigration tent cities or concentration camps at the border. Now, I'm saying this is... I never intended, really, to do another part four on this series here. But when I saw in a vision last night U.S. cities being occupied by the U.S. military, I thought, i got to do another video. Yeah. By the way, when you're on my YouTube channel, make sure you subscribe. i got 24,221 subscribers as of the second, probably more, if I click the refresh button, yeah. Trump to set up immigration tent cities or concentration camps. And each, each video has very good information that I've done uh, and biblical uh, perspective on, on these subjects, yeah. And I thought, wow, from last night I got this vision and I was in, the Lord took me by the Holy Spirit uh, into the future, yeah, to see the U.S. military patrolling U.S. cities on the board. 
I thought, what? And then I thought about uh, Afga the war in Afghanistan. Since 2001, 17 years ago, and that war still going on. Military, U.S. military patrolling the streets. Maybe it's whatever you sow you're going to reap. But don't get me wrong, like I said, Trump is a great president. He's just wanting to keep this country safe. And what do you do when thousands upon thousands and thousands, and maybe even millions of people start coming from the southern border that are being paid by the New World Order to come here? It's a strange a time, yes? There, why would the Lord show you that? John 16, 13, when the Spirit of truth comes, the Holy Spirit, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak of his own, but uh, on his own, but he will tell you what he has heard. He will tell you about the future. John 16, 13. Oh, well, yeah. I, I've been given information about the future my whole life by the Holy Spirit. Jesus' is Spirit, yeah. Revelation, that was, that was John chapter 16, verse 13. Then Revelation chapter 1, verse 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ. Jesus always likes to give revelation of what's going to happen. Has, is, and will happen. The revelation of Jesus the Messiah, which God gave to him to show... His servants, born again, spirit-filled people, things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John, or in this case, Daryl. <laughs> you know, Jesus is the same yesterday, yesterday, today, and forever, right? Yeah. So it's not like we have a different Jesus two thousand years ago, and a, you know, then then we have today. Oh, that was a different Jesus. <laughs> no, the Lord's always wanting to give revelation of things. Past, present, and future. Revelation chapter 1. I'm not going to read all of this. Verse 4. John, the apostle of the seven churches which are in Asia, grace to you and peace from him. See, there's always grace and peace. Listen, if you're not born again spirit-filled, you better get born again spirit-filed. Jesus washed my sins away, filled with your Holy Spirit. Get in the Bible and do it because you're going to freak out with upcoming events. Yeah, if you're not. From him which is, which was, and which is to come. See, that's Jesus. The Holy Spirit, the Father. He's always dealing with the is, past, present, past, and future. From the seven spirits which are before his throne. See, so the Holy Spirit is poured out in, onto the seven continents, or into the seven continents. The rivers of God from heaven to the seven continents. Seven spirits. It's not seven different Holy Spirits. It's seven rivers of God flowing from heaven to the nations. To cause, to cause people, it will try to cause people to get, to, to get ready for his return. Verse 5, from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness. He'll tell you, he'll speak to you, witness, talk to you. The first begotten of the dead. He was raised from the dead. He's the prince of the kings of the earth. He's the government. He's the real government. Unto him that loved us, Jesus, the Father, the Holy Spirit, and washed us from our sins in his own blood. See, you cannot fight the new world order without having your sins washed away by the blood sacrifice of Jesus. Yeah. Verse 6 has made us kings and priests. Who do you think you are? Well, actually, by, this, by having our sins washed away in the name of Jesus. God has made us kings and priests unto him. God shows us as his kings. It's not Hillary Clinton, Secretary of State, former. I mean, if I, if, you know, there's a television uh, series. I don't, I don't like it. I don't watch it. It's called, what's it, Madam Secretary? I thought, man, Hillary Clinton used to be Secretary of State. If she can be Secretary of State, anybody can. I mean, total corrupt, evil, wicked, murderer. Yeah. The Lord doesn't care about that low-level positions. God makes us kings and priests unto him. We really rule on the earth by our prayers and obedience. Most of the governments on the earth are crazy. Now, Trump is born again spirit-filled. And the Lord is using him. He's not perfect, but he's the perfect man for the job. He's sure doing a lot of uh, rallies, two a day now. Yeah. Well, tomorrow's the midterm elections, yeah. You pray, you leave it in the Lord's hands, you do what you can, you vote, you tell people what's going on, and you leave it in the Lord's hands to see what he does. We are the government's kings and priests unto God and his Father. To him be glory, dominion forever and ever. See, he really has the dominion. He comes, verse 7, with the clouds, and every eye shall see Jesus, and they which pierced him, and all kindreds of the world shall wail because of him. So, amen. Jesus said, uh, verse 8, I am the Alpha, the Omega. What's that? The beginning and the end. Of course he's going to show you the future. I believe he showed me what's going to happen. U.S. military going to occupy U.S. cities on the border. I thought it was, it just felt weird. 
was walking down, you know, back lanes, uh, la you know, driveways, this, that, and the other. A city looks like San Diego. And it was full of, you, not, just, not, not the border. You got it. When you go through San Diego, you go toward the border. It wasn't the border. It was, the, it was U.S. cities occupied by U.S. military. Which again, reminds me of the video I did on the uh, four days ago called Mexico Migrant Caravan, 14,000 or more coming. Tip of the iceberg, maybe to the millions. And that also stems from another vision I had, uh, I think, seven years ago. Yeah. I, I called it Red Scout. Let me see. Daryl Lawson YouTube video. Video, video. Spell it right, Daryl. Okay, video called Red Sky. Boom. I pulled up the other day. Let me think. It should Google should give it to me right now. Yeah. Yeah, okay, that was, uh, how many years, ago? what did I say? August 14, 2011. Red sky warning, false flag attack. During that period of time in 2011, I had visions and dreams about all that's happening right now. That's <laughs> seven years ago. <laughs> well, the Bible said in the last days, God will pour out his, Jesus will pour out his spirit upon all humans, and you shall get visions and dreams, and you shall prophesy and speak of things to come. You'll have revelation of things that happen, things that are happening now and shall happen. Yeah. What? Yeah. Well, Revelation 1.8, I'm the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning, the ending. Of course he knows. The Lord which is, which was, and which is to come. Again, he's telling us, as we get closer to his return, what's going on? Events, timings. Nation rising against nation. Matthew 24.7. Again, Revelation chapter 1, same chapter, verse 11. I am the Alpha, the Omega, the first and the last. What you see, write in a book or do a video on. <laughs> Send it out. <laughs> Revelation 1, 11. Again, verse 19, Revelation 1, 19. Write the things which you have seen or do a video. They didn't have YouTube or Facebook. <laughs> or Brighteon, which is the new naturalnews.com web uh, web. Uh, Provider hosting, yeah, like a, a alternative to uh, YouTube, yeah. It's called Brighteon. You can see it on my on my uh, website, DarylLawson.com, called Real Video. They just changed the name to Brighteon, yeah. Nation shall rise against nation. That's what we're seeing. Look at verse nineteen, Revelation one nineteen. Write the things which you have seen, or do a video on it, which you have seen, which you have seen, which you have seen. For the future, I mean, the whole book of Revelation is a is is basically. Well, what you have seen, what is happening, what's going to happen. But a lot of it, most of it, was for features, futuristic uh, occurrences. Future occurrences. Of course, 2,000 years later, like, hello, right now. Write the things which you have seen, the things which are, and the things which shall be hereafter. See? Past, present, and future. So I've mentioned that. So I go back to, uh, I'm going to read the articles right now. Matthew 24, 7, that for nation shall rise against nation. For nation shall rise against nation. Honduras, Mexico, and it's not really an army, it's, it's people. Caravans, migrants, kingdom against kingdom. Of course, they're being sponsored. Kingdom against kingdom. Nationality. If you go into the Greek, it means nationality against nationality. Culture against culture. Groups against groups. And of course, there shall be famines, pestilence, disease. Well, they're saying that these caravans, migrants, are carrying all sorts of diseases. You know, famines, people are paying them, but their their feet are swelling and you know, this, that, and the other. Earthquakes in diverse places. Yeah, Ma Matthew 24, 7. Are we not seeing that? All right, let's read from Wall Street Journal. More than 4,800 troops. This is U.S. military troops are near the border or at the border. Uh, size of deployment has increased several times in the past 10 days. I mean, this is this hot off the press. Right in your face. Today's date, yeah. More than 4,800, 4,800, almost 5,000 American troops are positioning themselves near three areas along the U.S.-Mexican border. Now, are they going to stay there for a long time? Maybe. High probability, yes. Who really knows? Could be. And if this is an ongoing attack, I mean, you're never going to run out of people. Bring people from Central America, South America, 
you know, uh, Mexico, bring people from around the world. They're not going to come as easily through the northern border, through Canada. How can you attack the U.S.? Uh, how can you attack it uh, better than through an invasion of people through your southern border? Because Mexico's government uh, and governments of the past are totally Vatican run. Sure they are. So just that, you know, people, well, of course, they have elections, that and the other. But uh, the Canadians really won't stand as much for, I, I, I believe, uh, you know, wait, listen. There's a difference between Mexico and Canada. Hello? <laughs> the New World Order tries to get countries into poverty, uh, disarmed, take away their guns, take away their money, take away, you name it, and make them uh, poor. Because when you're a poor country, you can be manipulated uh, more easily. And I think that's really, uh, it's easier to manipulate and go through Mexico for a porous border or an invasion than to the Canadian border. Duh. More than 4,800 American troops, American troops, American troops are positioning themselves near the uh, three areas along the U.S.-Mexican border, U.S. officials said today, near locations where officials have assessed migrants and asylum seekers from Central America are most likely to try to enter the country. The total sum, uh, is, uh, the total sum is up from about 3,500 as of just Friday, and comes as the Pentagon has increased the size of deployment at least three times in the past 10 days. Hello! During the closing days of the midterm campaign season, which is uh, tomorrow, right? Elections. President Trump has called the caravans traveling by foot in southern, uh, in southern Mexico uh, and likely weeks away from reaching the U.S. border, a security threat to the U.S. It's true. Troops are now in place. Troops are now in place around McAllen, in Brownsville, in Texas, uh, Rio Grande Valley, San Ysidro, California, south of San Diego, and Nogales, Arizona. So, uh, hello! Troops, not just in one state. All right, we got in Texas, we got Arizona, we got Cal California. And they're not just on the border. Or... They won't be just on the border. I'm, I'm going to predict that. They won't just be on the border. Now they're going to be using uh, the bases as well, which is, you know, if you go from here down to Camp Pendleton, Camp Pendleton is not on the border. Camp Pendleton is north of San Diego. Yeah. So we're talking about U.S. troops occupying U.S. cities here. Well, they're not. Well, I think they will. The troops were the first to arrive of more than 7,000 active uh, duty personnel. Well, it's going to be maybe 15,000 or more. The Defense Department said would provide for U, uh, support for U.S. Customs and Border Protection officers along the border. No troops were deployed at any of the dozens of ports of entry between the two countries. Instead, they are, are, are in nearby staging areas. That's what we're saying right now, but I think it's going to grow into the cities. Caravans consist of Hondurans and others fleeing. See, others. Not just Mexico, Hondurans and others fleeing crime and violence back home. Many hoping for asylum in the U.S. Members of the nearest caravan walk toward the Rio Grande Valley crossing as the closest ports of entry. The caravan could reach the border in about three weeks. All right, so that's why it's happening, this movement now, yeah. But the U.S. military. Now here's one from the San Diego, uh, San Diego Union Tribune, which is, is what I, I think I saw last night, San Diego, and troops, U.S. military troops in San Diego, which is not at the border. And here it is. There's six, six now San Diego area military bases will be used to assist at border for Operation Faithful Patriot. At border, at border, at border. Yeah, but the bases aren't at the border. Faithful Patriot. Now, what's, what's Trump going to do? He can hem haw about it. I think Trump's doing what he should do to protect this country. But I think people better get used to seeing the U.S. military occupying U.S. cities. I know it sounds weird. Now, that's against law. So, well, yeah, well, things are changing quite quickly right now. Six military bases in San Diego County, see, this is not the board, will be used as logistics hubs for supplies and troops, hello, to help with securing the southwest border following President Trump's announcement Wednesday that he would deploy as many as 15,000 
military personnel in response to caravans. Maybe more now of Central American migrants making their way north with Marine Corps uh, base uh, Camp Pendleton, which is about 45 minutes from here. Marine Corps Air Station Miramar, Naval Air Station North Island Coronado. Oh, Coronado is beautiful. You ever go to Coronado Island, San Diego area? Oh, and Naval Base San Diego and Naval Base Point Loma, as well as Naval Station, uh, Naval Air Station El Centro, will participate in a deployment named Operation Faithful Patriot. That's a whole lot of troops and bases. Six. They had quote they have been identified as base support installations. Staging areas, see, support installation. This is way off the border. Staging areas for troops, for helicopters to land and supplies to be distributed. 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 <laughs> that sounds weird. Said Air Force Captain Blah 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 in Northern Command in Colorado. Now I got Colorado. Okay. Military troops will help with planning, engineering, transportation, logistics, and medical support to the U.S. Customs and Border Protection, according to the Northern Command Statement. Now we're talking about. Something like in Syria here. Afghanistan, Iraq. Yeah, you don't think so? I think so. Because if these uh, caravans come on a consistent basis and grow, I, I think this is what the New World Order wants. They want the caravans to continue 24-7. 365. Okay, well, maybe they'll stop this one. Maybe they'll bring another one. And another one. And another one. And bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And, and maybe do some false flag events in Mexico. To even, you know, try to tip the scales of millions of people coming over. Watch my video that I just did on that. But until last night, I wasn't even thinking about U.S. military occupying U.S. cities. Like some kind of war zone. It's creepy. It was creepy to see that in a vision last night. Yeah. Ish. Task will include uh, erecting temporary vehicle barriers. That's what I saw last night in my vision. Vehicle barriers. And fencing and installing light towers. I saw that. Not on the border in U.S. cities. Barbed wire and, con and concertina. How do you say that? Concertina wire. Temporary housing and meals will be provided, and medical personnel will be deployed as needed for patient care. They're going to be a whole. They're going to be needed a whole lot closer than Camp Pendleton. You're going to have to be in San Diego. Makes sense to me. We'll go up to anywhere between ten and fifteen thousand military personnel on. Top of border control, ICE, and everybody else at the border. Trump said before departing Washington for campaign, Florida rally, and nobody's coming in. We're not allowing people to come in. Yeah, but what happens if that hundreds, millions of people hit the border? It wasn't clear whether Trump's 15,000 figure included National Guard deployment. Trump's comments came a day after the general in charge of the border deployment said 5,239 active duty troops would be heading to the border with more potentially to follow, of course, in addition to the 2,092 members of the National Guard already there. So active troops and National Guard. So nobody knows the full extent of if, if the, the 15,000 are going to be active duty troops, not just National Guard. If the deployment reaches 15,000 troops, it would be roughly equivalent, equivalent to the size of the U.S. military's presence in Afghanistan. I just said Afghanistan. And, which has been going on for, what, 17 years? And three times the size of the presence in Iraq right now. Which, is going, which has been going on for what? Uh, 15 years. Yeah. 15,000 troops are finally there. It would be roughly equivalent to the size of the U.S. military's presence in Afghanistan right now and three times the size of those in Iraq. Already, last sentence, already... The deployment, the deployment is believed to be the largest of its kind in more than a hundred years. <laughs> what did you expect in the days before Jesus Christ's return? Did you expect everything just to be not happening? No activity? No Bible prophecies being fulfilled? They have been, they are, and they will be continually being fulfilled. Matthew 24, 7, for nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. Nationality against nationality, population against population. And of course, they add famines and disease and earthquakes in diverse places. All included in just one verse in Matthew 24, but you got to add all, all of the verses I read together. And of course, other prophecies together. I think, wow. 
So Daryl, what is this? So this is this is just you know more awareness. Don't you want revelation of things to come? Now, do I think there's going to be World War III before the Lord's return, at least in the next rapture? No. Do I believe that the, trip, the, troop, uh, the troops will probably occupy U.S. cities before the next rapture? They are happen it's happening right now. <laughs> I think it's, it's, it's needed. I think that this is a, a chess game against the New World Order, and Trump is just trying to move pieces into position. But if you think that the U.S. cities, the U.S. border cities are going to stay the same, they are not, Bob. They're going to be transformed, I believe, U.S. border cities, U.S.-Mexico border cities, into war-like zones. Like they were saying in this article from the San Diego uh, Tribune.com. Uh, Erecting vehicle barriers, fencing, light towers, barbed wire, and concert, concertina wi uh, wire as well. And like I said the other day, when the next rapture happens, all this will be turned into massive concentration camps. Don't be worried. It has to come to pass. All right? Before the Great Tribulation. Next rapture is going to happen before the Great Tribulation, but stuff is already happening. I mean, you think that the technology wouldn't be used and come into existence before the Mark of the Beast? Sure. The Mark of the Beast will be implemented in the near future. Nobody will be able to buy or sell unless you take the Mark of the Beast on your right hand or your forehead. Well, that technology had to exist before it was implemented. Likewise, therefore, hence what we're seeing right now, there has to be military uh, presence in this country to fight the beast system, which is you know, everywhere, and trying to come up from other countries in the southern border. Yeah. Am I worried? No, I'm not worried. Am I scared? No. Why should I be? Uh, when you're a born-again, spirit-filled Christian, when your sins are washed away in the name of Jesus Christ, you're, you're always in a win-win situation. You win if you stay, and you win when you go. <laughs> All right? <laughs> Jesus is King of kings and Lord of lords. Yeah. No president, prime minister, no royalty on the earth rules the earth. Oh, they got a brief little bit of power here on the earth, but they don't rule the earth. Jesus rules. And his time schedule and his timings and his activities come to pass. And if you get in his way, he'll kick you right down underneath his feet. <laughs> Ask the past empires. All the past empires have come and gone. The Assyrians, the Egyptians, the Babylonians, the Medes, the Persians, the Grecians, the Romans. Now we have a weird New World Order type scenario right now. It's kind of a revised Roman Empire right now. Uh, but it's definitely here. And when Obama was president, he was trying to set the final stages of the New World Order to bring everybody into line, into one world government. But he failed, which is exactly what Revelation 13 said would happen. Yeah, so this is happening right before our very eyes. Like I said, Jesus Christ is about to come back. Your best, uh, people say bet, <laughs> opportunities to get born again spirit filled now, yeah. Because if you try to fight the beast or evil in these last days without Jesus' help, you're going to be destroyed, yeah. You're going to be chewed up and spit up, or worse. <laughs> What's worse than that? Well, killed. <laughs> Jesus, watch my sins away, fill me with your Holy Spirit, get in the Bible and do it. And then watch my videos. I have over 3,000 videos. You can see all the links there at DarylLawson.com, YouTube videos, Facebook videos. Take a quick break here, and then I'll come back and do another live video. Yeah, or another, I'll, I'll do a live video on Facebook, yeah. Uh, anyways, all my links, information, posting 24-7 on my website. Uh, you'll see that there, DarylLawson.com or DarylLawsonLive.com. Pass this video on, on and on to other people and all my other videos. Uh, it will help them go forward. You're not going to get this on ABC, CBC, uh, 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 CNN. Uh, MSNBC, well, even Foxy News, but only goes so far. You got to, we got to know more than they know. Well, oh, of course, we got, we got the Messiah, Jesus, His Spirit living in us. We should know more than that. We should be uh, more bold than they are. We should be uh, the first to know what's going on, not the last. Yeah. Anyways, have fun with Jesus. <laughs> if you don't have uh, Jesus in your life, man, 
you're screwed in these last days. Yeah. All right, go to my website, pass the information on. I will see you later. Don't forget, I have a donation button on my website. Thank you for your prayers and financial support. Uh, I have a donation button on my website, darylawson.com, through PayPal. God will bless you for your prayers and financial support. According to the, uh, the Bible, the B-I-B-L-E, Malachi chapter 3, verses 8 to 12. I love you. I will see you later. God bless you. See you in the next video. Bye for now.